The following are questions and answers with His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 23rd of March, 1969, in Honolulu, Hawaii. First question is, what is the practice to preach? Yes. We are preaching the original practice. Practice means which is practically done. And sometimes things are impractical when they are unnatural. And natural things can be practiced very easily. So our preaching is to reinstate the living soul to its original condition. The original condition of living being is part and parcel of the Supreme Law. As such, the part and parcel is meant for rendering service to the whole. Just like this finger is part and parcel of my body, the finger is expected to give service to the whole body. When I am feeling itching, my finger is helping. When I want to pick up something, my finger is helping. Similarly, any part of my body, when I want to go out, my leg is walking. When I want, I want to see something, my eyes are helping. So, this way you can understand. What do we mean by part and parcel? Take materially also, any machine, the part and parcel, just like here is a machine, tape recorder, there are different parts. One part is required to give uh, adjust speed, one part is required how to move, how to start, how to stop, how to increase, the different parts. Similarly, the, we are living entities and the Lord is also a living entity. And we are originally created to help the Lord. He does not require because He is complete. But just to give a crude example, as a part and parcel required, now, suppose this finger is not giving me service, it is diseased. So sometimes doctors advise that you have to amput this finger, otherwise it will affect the whole body. Similarly, we, living entities, being part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, when we rebel, that is our disease condition. We don't, know, when we don't want to render service to the Lord. That is a state which is called demonic state. The demonic state, just like a city of the state, is part and parcel. A citizen is expected to render service to the state, but if he refuses, then he is considered a traitor or a criminal. 
and is put into punishment. Similarly, all the living entities who are in this material world, they are rebelled. They are part and parcel sons of the Lord, but they have refused to give service under certain condition, it may be. And they are all put into this material world. And in this material world, there are different varieties of living entities. So all of them are criminals. Maybe first class criminal, third class criminal, second class criminal. Amongst the criminals also in the prison house, their divisions. So here those who are materially prosperous, they are also criminals, but first class criminals. That is the difference. And those who are suffering materially, they are also criminals. So they are third class criminals, but all of them criminals. How they are criminals? Because either one is rich or poor, he is subjected to the tribulations of this material nature. It does not mean that the rich man will not die, but everyone wants to live, either rich man or poor man. It is not that the rich man will not be diseased, but everyone wants to take precaution against disease. No one wants to become diseased, but everyone becomes diseased. Everyone dies. It is not that the rich man will not become old, and the simply poor man will become old. No, everyone will become old. It is not that when a child takes birth, the condition within the womb of the mother, yet tight back, cannot move. We forget, but that is a great suffering. The suffering of death, suffering of birth, suffering of disease, and suffering of old age. These are imposed on the living entities, those who are criminals. Criminals means revolted against the service of the law. So we are trying to bring them into practice how to serve law, how to, how to serve the Supreme Law. That is our movement. It is not patchwork. Other humanitarian societies or welfare societies, they are trying to give some patchwork. They cannot give relief to the stringent laws of nature, birth, death, old age and disease. But we are giving the final cure of the disease or condition of material existence. That is the teaching of Bhagavad Gita. Mang hi partha vipasritta jipi su papa junaya. In this material world, there are consideration of pious activities or impious activities. By pious activities, one gets very good family, birth in very good family, and nice education, beautiful body, janmai uh, sadya sutta four things. Birth either in good nation or good family, janma, and vaisadya means wealth, richness, and sutta means education, and Sri means beauty. So this is the consideration of material pious or impious. And impious means that's the opposite. Birth in abominable 
species of life, just like cats, dogs, hogs, all uncivilized people, ugly feature, no education. These are the consideration pious or impious. But either you become pious or impious, you cannot get out of these things and laws of nature, birth, death, disease and old age. So we are educating our students to practice how to revive his old, the eternal constitutional position to serve the law. This is our practice. Just like here you can see the boys have decorated the sitting place of the Lord, how nice with flowers and, and candles. It is not very expensive. But it is so beautiful that immediately it attracts. So everyone can practice at home. Is it very difficult task to gather some flowers and some leaves and decorate and have some picture or statue of the Lord, offer him some fruits, flowers? Every kind of one can do this. And by doing this, he gets the highest perfection of life. Never coming into this material world and suffer all this nonsense. This is our practice. That, what's the basic idea behind Krishna consciousness? That means originally we are Krishna conscious. Krishna or God is my Lord, is my Father, because part and parcel, just like somebody's children. The children is a part and parcel of the body. Why I love my child? Because he is my part and parcel of this body. I don't love so much other children because they are not part and parcel of my body. This family affection means uh, the family members, they have got a relationship with my body. Therefore, he has got the consciousness, my, he is my father, he is my mother. And the parents have consciousness, they are my child. So they have got some duty. The father wants to see how the children are comfortably raised. And the children also seeing the interest of the father and mother. Just like in family life we have got a certain kind of consciousness. He is my father, he is my child. Similarly, if we develop our original consciousness that God is our father, we are all children, then the whole trouble ceases. If God is the proprietor of everything and every children has got right to enjoy the God's property, then where is the trouble? For want of this consciousness, Krishna consciousness, everyone is claiming this is my property. This is my state. This is my country. Aham mumeti. Aham means I and mama means mine. This is nonsense. Nothing belongs to you. Everything belongs to God. Everyone has got right to live on God's property. This is Krishna consciousness. If everyone is taught this God consciousness, there is no need of this artificial united nations. We are united by nature. God is the center. Why artificial spending so much money? We are united not only in the human society, but we are united in all living societies, all living entities. Why we should uh, treat 
the animals as different because there is no Krishna consciousness. I have got my consciousness that the human beings in America are my brothers or my countrymen. Uh, they should be given all protection. Uh, why not cows? They are also born in America. Why they are being sent to slaughterhouse? Because there is no Krishna consciousness. There is no Krishna consciousness. Therefore this partiality. The only human being is my brother and the cows and the other animals, they are not my brother. This is lack of knowledge. But if we become Krishna conscious, if we take teachings of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna consciousness, Krishna says, Sarva Juni Shukantiya Sambhavanti Murtayaja. In all species of life, in all forms of life, as many creatures are there, they are all my sons. So how can you treat others? as not your brother. They are also your brother. Even the ant is also your brother. He is in a different class of imprisonment. That's all, a different body. The ant has got also the same punishment, birth, death, old age and disease as you have got. You are also criminal, he is also criminal. But he is also son of God, you are also son of God. This is Krishna consciousness. If one becomes Krishna conscious, then Brahma Bhuta Prasanna Atma. As soon as he becomes Krishna conscious, then he becomes joyful. Oh, because he has no more any. Everyone is my brother. Therefore, he has no fear. If I become enemy to you, you become my enemy. If I am friendly to you, you are my friend. So, a Krishna conscious person does not see anyone as uh, something other than son of God. Uh, he sees not that only this, uh, this person is son of God and that person is not son of God. This is lack of Krishna consciousness. Every living entity is son of God. Therefore, one can love, one can actually have the idea of universal brotherhood only in Krishna consciousness, not otherwise. Otherwise, there's simply false propaganda. Real Krishna consciousness, when one achieves, he becomes prasanna. Joyful, that is the first symptom of becoming full. Krishna comes. Prasannatma, Brahma Bhuta, Prasannatma, Nasujati, Nakankati. He has no hankering, he has no lamentation. Sama Sarvesu Bhutesu, this is the third stage of Krishna consciousness. Sama Sarvesu Bhutesu, Sama means equality. Sarvesu, or Bhutesu, entities. This is third stage. First stage is joyfulness. Second stage is no want, no lamentation. And third stage to see all living entities on the same. Pandita samadarshana. When one is actually learned, he sees. Madhavakti lavate param. Then he becomes eligible to be a devotee of the law. To become devotee of the Lord is not so easy. These are the conditions. The beginning is joyfulness. The second stage, no want, no lamentation. My father is Krishna, so I will be fully subject like a child. He knows my father is there, I have no want. Everything is there. Prasanna, why shall I anchor it? Similarly, tiger is my brother, but not that because originally he is my brother, I shall go and embrace. No. I shall be careful. But not that I shall kill. Why shall I kill? Uh, he is not coming to encroach upon my property. He is living in the jungle. Why shall I go and kill a tiger? 
This is all nonsense. Lack of Krishna consciousness. He has not done any harm to you. He is living in his own jurisdiction. He is uncivilized. He is ferocious. God has given him direction. Oh, you live here. You don't go there. That's all right. And why should you go to kill a tiger? He is not coming to impress him. This is Krishna consciousness. Why should I kill unnecessary an animal? Oh, we have got so many nice foodstuff. Krishna has given me grains, fruits, meal. The cows, they are supplying tons of milk. But they are not claiming it is my milk, I shall drink. No, it is given to you. As mother gives, and you are killing cows, killing mothers, this is lack of Krishna consciousness. So we teach all these things to our students who are going to Krishna consciousness. His con members talk about serenity, tranquility and bliss. That is already explained. If I am trained in Krishna consciousness, then I am, I am a sane man. I am not a madman, because I know what is my position, what is God, what are other living entities, what is this world, what is this material nature, what is this time, what are these activities. This knowledge is in full, because Krishna consciousness teaches all these things. What is God, what you are, and then what is this nature? Beyond the nature, what other things are there? Those who are not Krishna conscious, they do not know. They are a frogs of the well, simply calculating these three feet water space is my habitation. And when he is given information of the Atlantic Ocean, he does not believe. Oh, there is Atlantic Ocean. What is that nonsense? Oh, it is very, very big, somebody says. No, he is simply calculating his well water. Oh, it may be four foot. No, very big. All right, ten feet. How? Oh, he is calculating this. These materialistic scientists are simply speculating like the frog in the well. They do not know. Neither they have means. But a Krishna conscious person knows he gets information from Krishna. Atva bahunaitena kingyatena tavarjana vistabhyaham midam kristam ekamsena sthitu jagat. Now this material world is simply a fractional part of my creation. And what is this material world? This material world, we cannot even estimate one universe. What is the length and breadth and how many planets are there, how they are working. We have no information. And we are very proud of advancement of knowledge. And there are innumerable universes, all taken together that is called material world. Jasa Prabha Prabhavatu, in the Brahma Sangita I get this information. Jasa Prabha Prabhavatu Jagadanda Koti. Jagadanda. Jagadanda means universes. Koti means universe. Hundreds of thousands uh, multiplied by another hundred. Hundred, hundred. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has said that this universe is a grain of mustard seed in the bag of a mustard seed. Just imagine. Can anyone count what is the number of mustard seeds in a bag, in a one-ton or two-ton bag? Inhuman. It is beyond our uh, experience. But there are so many universes. Just in a packed up in a bag. Uh, and this is called material. So what to speak of the spiritual world? 
the spiritual world is at least three times greater than this material world. That information we get from Bhagavad Gita. Ekaṁsina sita. Eka means one part. Even if you take one part, maybe one of hundred. But even not going so far, one part means divide the whole thing into four parts. That is one-fourth. This material world is only one-fourth of the whole creation. And the three-fourth part is spiritual world. In the spiritual world, there is similarly innumerable planets and innumerable living entities. Just like, as I have already explained, that this material world is the, just like prison house of the criminals. So our criminal department in the state, say jail or prison house, uh, that is not uh, the country-wise as big as the country, there is a fractional part. Maybe a few hundred people or a few thousand people living there, but the state is very big. Similarly, the Lord's state is so big, though the criminal living entities are living in a corner only. This material world is in a corner. So what information we can get? about God. God is great. We simply theoretically say, but we do not know how great it is. He is. And how His greatness is working. That we do not know. But Krishna calls us persons because they are getting knowledge from Krishna directly. They have got all this knowledge. Therefore their knowledge is perfect. If one were to begin to study his gone techniques, what would he have to give up? The give up, the give up means, first give up is that I am this material body. The nonsense idea that I am this body, uh, that is the root of all misunderstanding. So he has to give up this bodily consciousness. And that is naturally, that is the beginning of teachings of Krishna consciousness. The Bhagavad Gita teaches Arjuna, Arjuna was overwhelmed of family affection. How can I fight with my members of the family? They are my brothers. So this conception, bodily conception, was first of all eradicated in the Bhagavad Gita. He lectured, Arjuna was talking, arguing with Krishna that if I kill my family, male members, the female members will be without husband and they will be polluted and there will be unwanted children and this and so many as far as one can materialistic person can think. So he was talking like that as a very man of wisdom. So Krishna first of all chastised him, not in the beginning, because in the beginning there was friendly talk. But when Arjuna surrendered unto Krishna that you don't take me as your friend, I accept you as my spiritual master, so you teach me. Uh, this relationship of spiritual master and student, the student is called shisha. Shisha, the Sanskrit word. Shisha, this word comes from the root shash. Shash means ruling. From shash, the shastra. Shastra means authoritative books. They have been derived. And shastra, shastra means weapon, armaments. That is called shastra. Just like sword, guns, they are called shastra. But these two things are rulings. The state has got law books, authoritative books. And one who does not obey the law books, then the next word is gun and sword. This, these two words means 
to um, accept authority. The shisha means one who accepts the authority of the spiritual master. He voluntarily accepts the rulings or the punishment of the spiritual master. That is called shisha. Uh, one voluntary agrees to the spiritual master. This initiation is going on. Uh, this is the beginning of voluntary acceptance of the spiritual master. That means he agrees that he will abide by the orders of the spiritual master. This is called acceptance of spiritual master. Shishya. Shishya means voluntarily accepting the ruling. Everyone is free. If I give you some ruling, why should we accept it? Therefore, this formal initiation ceremony is performed. He promises, my dear sir, I shall abide by your Lord. So, Krishna was accepted by your Joe as spiritual master, just to teach him what is the actual duty in that world field. So, at that time, the first Shishya, Sasham, ruling, he chastised Arjuna by this word, my dear Arjuna, you are talking just like a very learned man, but no learned man talks like this. That means you are a fool. He very politely said that you are talking with me as if you are a very learned man, but your subject matter is so third class that he, no learned man takes the, this subject matter very serious. What is that? A bodily conception of life. You are talking just like a very learned man, but your center of activity is in body. So this is not a, learned, a symptom of a learned man. So if we take this crucial test of learning, we shall find hardly a learned man in this world. Hardly. One man. Because everyone is absorbed in this bodily concepts of life. All their ideas, this nationality, humanity, this deity, that deity, all, everything on this. Just sātma buddhi kuna pītu dhātuke. They are accepting this bag of skin and bones as cell. This is a bag made of skin and bone. And this is. Is spirit soul so cheap thing that it is a bag of skin and bone and some stools and urine combination? That is nonsense. So hardly you will find any sane man or any learned man in this world. So first teaching is that you are not this body. That is the beginning of Krishna's teaching. Dehina sminjatha dehi kumara jovanam jara tatha dehantram prati dhira sattva namayati. My dear John, you are posing yourself as very learned man. But a learned man is not disturbed by this change of body. Yes, he says very nice example that like a child a child is growing. Growing means he's changing body. A child is born so small, a few years he becomes big. Now where is that small body? That body is gone. You tell whatever you think, but that body is gone. Another body. And then the same child becomes youth, young man, and that body is gone. The same man becomes old man, and that your, your youthful body is gone. So every second the body is gone, but the soul is there. Anyone knows? You can remember, I can remember when I was child, I remember I was doing this. Where is that body? That body is gone. But I am remaining. Why I am remaining? Because I am eternal. I have changed my body, but I am there. Similarly, when I change this body, I still I will be there. This is knowledge. This is near condition. If in this, during this life, I am changing so many body, 
so many bodies still I am there. Similarly, it is natural conclusion. When I change this body, I shall remain, I may be in another body. This simple logic is sufficient for a sane man to understand that the living soul is eternal, the body is artificial dress. By changing dress, one does not die. He is eternal. So, uh, is the chanting of Hare Krishna the answer to living successfully in today's world? Oh, that is the only successful living in this today's world. So long people do not understand it, they are still in the darkness. This is the only. Why it is the only? Just see, these boys, these girls, I am not imported from India. I came here single-handed with seven dollars. I have got hundreds of students like that. How they have changed their character, their behavior. I have given them life. Some of them are married, they are living very nicely, they have got children, and they have given up their all bad habits. You see, they are not, uh, I mean, see, eating meat, they have no illicit sex life. They are strictly vegetarian. They are preparing nice food stuff from vegetable and grains. They do not take part in intoxication. They do not smoke even. Just see, practically, if everyone becomes like them, then what is the trouble? If you encourage them to indulge in illicit sex life, to become intoxicants, to gambler, and eating everything without any discrimination, then how you can expect to have very good man in this world? Then man. So this question that is this chanting of Hare Krishna answer to living successfully in today's what do you mean by successfully living? Successfully living does not mean that you work hard just like cats and dogs and eat something and have sex life at night. That is not successful life. That successful I mean, life is there even in the cats and dogs and hogs. The hogs are also laboring very hard. The cats and dogs there as well for their food and the sex is there. Everything is there. That is not successful life. Real successful life is how to understand his real constitutional position as part and parcel of the Supreme Lord. That is successful life. This is not successful life. What is this successful life? I see, I have got so many students. They are well qualified. But they have got, when they work, they have to work so hard that go at six o'clock to the working and comes again at six o'clock all day tired. They lost all vitality, all sense. Is that successful life simply for morsel of food, working so hard? And unless one works so hard, he cannot eat. We have created a civilization that one must earn thousands of dollars, then he can live like a gentleman. Is that successful life? And for earning that thousands of dollars he has to work so hard, just like animal, beast? No, that is not successful life. Successful life is that, that we said, make our bodily necessities of life as far as required, not more than that. I want to eat something, God has given sufficient food. You grow, you live anywhere, you grow food stuff, you grow grains, you grow fruits, you grow vegetables, keep cows, take milk. You can live anywhere. You haven't got to go 50 miles off with a car 
and to attend your office at six o'clock with velocity of hundred uh, miles speed. Is that successful life? Do you think? So where is successful life? We are proposing successful life. So whatever you do, you just become Krishna conscious, and at least you will feel that ah, my future hope is there. There is Krishna. That is successful life. At least he is hopeful that he is going to Krishna. Even he is working very hard. Never mind. I have been put into this condition of life. So that is successful life. At least one life, anyway, passed on. Krishna gives him assurance. The one who understands the philosophy of Krishna. Janma karma me divyam ju janati tattat. Anyone who simply understands what is Krishna, then his privilege is tattā dehaṁ punat janma naiti. He does not take any more birth in this material world. Then what does he go? Mamit. He comes to me. Simply try to understand Krishna. That's all. Even if you don't serve him, but Krishna is so attractive, as soon as you understand Krishna, then you have to serve. You see, it is so nice. But that is successful life. This is not successful life. This is unsuccessful life. Laboring whole life, and he does not know where he is going. Next life, what is either cat or dog, an animal or this or that, he does not know. He is in the darkness. Adanta gobi visatang tamisam punap punat charivita charvana. The same repetition of same foolishness and uncontrolled senses, he does not go where he is going. Just like unbridled horses. The man does not know where the horses are dragging me, either in the hell or the heaven, I don't know. Because the horses are not controlled, land is controlled. Simply running, high speed, that these motor cars are running this way and that, they do not know whether they will reach their destination any, at any point, they may be striking each other and finish. This is not successful life. Successful life means one should have peaceful life with great hope, future hope, without any disturbance. What is successful life? Even a man is not secure. He does not know when he goes to his office whether his household things are taken away by something. What is success? Successful life means he must feel secure that the government is taking care of everything. That is successful life. He has no cares and anxieties. He is simply developing his spiritual life. That is successful life. How much does this course of study cost? It costs nothing. If you simply come here, you understand everything. We don't charge anything. But they will not come. They go to a rascal who is charged fifty dollars for meeting and all talk nonsense, they will go there. And because we are not charging anything, they are not attractive. But how we can charge? We are servant of Krishna. Krishna says that you speak, so we are speaking, that's all. Why should we charge? But if somebody out of sympathy gives us something, we don't refuse. But you have no cost. We are working ourselves as far as possible and maintaining ourselves. But anyone who comes, we don't charge anything. We have got volumes of books. I have translated uh, six books, Simad Bhagavatam, and one book, Teachings of Lord Chaitanya, one book, Bhagavad Gita as it is. Some of the books are there, you can see. So there are so many books, immense knowledge. So it is not very costly with charging, very low price, just to printing charges. If somebody wants to purchase 
we have got our magazine, monthly magazine, back to Godhead. But if one does not pay, the same thing we are repeating daily in our meetings. So he can come and hear, God has given his the year, and he can learn. So there is no cost. There is no official cost. How much does this course of study cost? We don't charge anything. What should one know about Krishna consciousness? Is it something mystical? No mystical. No bluffing. You are part and parcel of God. Who can deny it? There is no secrecy. As you are part and parcel of your father, God is the supreme father, so you are and the part and parcel of your father, and it is your duty to love God. So what is the secrecy and what is mystical? We don't teach that you press your nose, you put your head, you uh, go up and down. Nothing required. Simply to know that God is my Father and I am His eternal Son. My duty is to love Him. That's all. There is no secrecy, there is no so-called bluff or mystical these or that. It is simple truth. Sarvadhanmaan parittajyamame kangsaranamvish. God is teaching that you simply surrender unto me, my dear son. Why you are independently? Just like here is one of my students, his father is a very big doctor. But he says, my dear son, you come home. Uh, he's a very moneyed man. He can give him some few hundred thousands of dollars. But you don't go to Krishna consciousness. That is his view. Uh, similarly, as the father is claiming from the son, my dear son, he just surrendered unto me, I shall give you my wealth, my everything. Similarly, God is also canvassing us. Uh, my dear sons, why you are unnecessarily traveling here and uh, making plans to be happy here, nonsense plans? You just surrender unto me. I shall give you all protection. Aṅtāṁ sarva pāpi bhamo khaśyāmi māsūcha. I shall give you all protection. Father is always ready to give a son all protection. That is nature. So we are all sons of God. We simply surrender unto Him and the business finished. Then where is the mystical and these are there? There is nothing secret. So simply one has to agree. But if the rascal son does not agree, oh, why shall I surrender to you? I shall remain independent. All right, you remain independent. You remain and suffer. So there is no mystic. Everything is clear. His con members speak knowingly of happiness. Don't followers of Krishna consciousness ever get angry? Yes, they can get angry. Why not? They are very much angry to the non-devotees. You rascal, why you are not surrendering yourself to God? You rascal. Yes, we are angry. This anger is service of Krishna. How can I give up anger? But we use anger in a different way, not for our sense gratification. Why you have not paid me such and such money? No, we don't say like that. Why you are not Krishna conscious? That is our anger. The anger can be utilized in Krishna conscious. Everything can be utilized in Krishna conscious. Why should I give up anger? Krishna is also angry. And I am son of Krishna, so anger is in me because I have got the qualities of my father. So how can I give up anger? But I use anger only for Krishna. So we do not leave anything, but we utilize everything for Krishna. That is our Krishna consciousness. So don't follow us at Krishna consciousness, never get angry. Yes, we get angry. Why not? We are not artificial. Human nature is to become anger, sometimes satisfied, sometimes. So we utilize this. We are angry when one is not Krishna conscious. Where is against God? Maharshi Mahesh Jogi had a plan to start a teaching the people at sixteen. Oh, now he can teach even a child without waiting for sixteen. We can teach 
he, he, or today or this boy's wife has not come. We have got a little child, his daughter, only one and a half years. He is also learning how to offer, go down, how to eat Krishna prasadam, how to clap during kirtan. There is no postna waiting for sixteen years. That is artificial. That is artificial. Why? One should know. Who knows? Who will live after sixteen years? Begin immediately. Begin immediately. You have got this chance of human form of life. That is the duty of the father and mother. All life. Here is a child. Let him take a little prasadam. All life. Little begin. And it is simple. Why one should wait for sixteen years or sixteen, uh, thirty-two years? No, there is no wait. Immediate. Will this come accept people this young? Oh, yeah, we. Younger? Even younger. Uh, even one child is within the womb of his mother, he can teach. It is so nice thing. The instance is Pallad Maharaj. Pallad Maharaj, when he was in his womb of his mother, one saintly sage taught his mother about Krishna consciousness. And the child became Krishna conscious from the womb of his mother. So we can teach even in the womb of the mother. It, because it is spiritual. It is not material. No material condition can check this teaching. Ahuitugi apratihata. That is the highest perfection and system of religion, which is unchecked, develops love of God. That is first class in Not under any condition. Ahitukya pratiyata, pratiyata, without being checked. Krishna consciousness is not such thing that because one is child, oh, he cannot learn. Because one is blind, he cannot learn. Because one is poor, that therefore he cannot learn. Because one is rich, no condition. Anyone. Simply he must be a living entity. That's all. He must, he must not be a dead stone. If he has got life, he can learn Krishna consciousness. It is so simple and so nice. What is the significance of the food that is eaten as is called kirtans? Oh, the significance of our food is not exactly vegetarian and non-vegetarian. Don't miss that. We simply take what is offered to Krishna, that's all. So Krishna can be offered anything? No. Just like if some guest comes to your house, you ask, how can I serve you? What food stuff you like to eat? He says, I like this. All right. Similarly, we are order carrier of Krishna. We ask Krishna what, what you want to eat. And Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, they give me vegetable, fruits, liquid. I tell you very much please. So we offer Krishna fruits, grains, milk, and their preparation. They are very nice. If you come here, and eat with us, we'll forget meat eating. It is so nice. So our proposition is not that vegetarian, non-vegetarian. Vegetarian and non-vegetarian, it is not very important thing. Everyone is eating some living entity. Vegetable has got also life. It does not mean that one man is eating meat, therefore he is killing. But even the vegetarians, they are also killing. But our process is, we, killing is not very important or non-important for us. If Krishna says kill, we can kill. If Krishna says this, don't kill, we don't. Because we are simply order carrier, just like Arjun. Arjun was opposing himself by his family relationship, there is very perfect, non-violent gentleman. But Krishna induced him to fight, to kill the other party. So for us, killing or non-killing is not very important thing, because everyone is killing, knowingly or unknowingly. So our point is, 
uh, we take food stuff offered to Krishna. And whatever Krishna is, that is our food stuff. We distribute that thing. Does Iskan believe in reincarnation or this, there is no question of belief? It is a fact. I have already explained that the the child, the small child is reincarnating from one body to another, one body to another, one body to another. So similarly, the final chain is called reincarnation. So there is no question of belief. It is a fact. Only the blind man, he cannot see it. Belief means it may be fact or not fact. I blindly believe. That is a different thing. Here is a science. One plus one equals to two, just like that. This body changes, this body changes, this body changes, and the, the living entity is there everywhere. Therefore, every moment the reincarnation is going on, every second. What is the question of belief? It is a fact. Why are Krishna students given spiritual names? So just to remember Krishna. We suppose this boy is Gary. So I have given him the name of Gaurasanda. Gaurasanda is Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So at least he chants. At least when I ask him, uh, Gaurasanda, then I get the opportunity of chanting Lord's name. Is it? Because our process is chanting. So if my students, my sons, my friends, they are all in God's name, then I chant always. This is the significance. I ask him, Gaurasanda, I ask him, Bhavandev, I ask him, uh, Govinda Dayashi, that means I'm chanting. Haranam Iva Kevalam. My business is to chant the name of the Lord. So they are giving me chance to utter the name of the Lord. And besides that, there is another affix Dash. Gaurasundar Dash. Baman Dash. Dash means servant. He also remembers that I am servant of Gaur, Lord Gauranga. I am servant of Lord Bhavan. I am med servant of Govinda. So, I am a friend, Sudama was a friend of Krishna. So I am the servant of Krishna's friend, Sudama Das. See, in this way, our relationship with Krishna, so you always remember. That remembrance is also self-realization process. Sarvanam kīrtanam viṣṇo, smaranam, smaranam memorizing by context. As soon as I utter Sudāma, I immediately remember Sudāma was a friend of Krishna, so I remember Krishna, reference to the context. Therefore this is offered, the spiritual names. What are his future plans here? Will a temple be built? Yes, temple is already there. Here is a temple. Unfortunately, nobody coming. What can he do? We are prepared to give this nice philosophy to everyone. There is no necessity of creating a very huge building as temple. We can see it anywhere and carry this Radha Krishna and keep there and chant Hare Krishna, that is a temple. We don't require any huge building. Yes, temple means wherever there is God, that is temple. What is the difference between temple, church, and ordinary house? Temple means where there is God, or church where there is God. God means where there is God's name. Because and in this condition we cannot see God, but God is not different from His name. So wherever the chanting is there, that is the temple. And if other rules and regulations are followed, then it is temple. Tattratishtha minārada jatra gāyanti madhvatya. It is said, Lord says, that I stay there. 
Wherever my pure devotees are glorifying me, I stay there. God is everywhere, but particularly He is there. So, temple, there is no necessity. But if somebody has got money and if he wants to spend it for Krishna, then we can give plan a very nice temple, you see, spending millions of dollars. Uh, we have got such ideas, just planned. But that, that does not mean that we are depending on a temple. We can create temple anywhere and everywhere simply by sitting chanting. So last question, if so, where? So there is no particular place where we have to start our temple. Anywhere we can start temple. We, start, we are starting temple daily, either in the beach or underneath a tree or anywhere. But for a special purpose, this temple is already there. So people are welcome. And here this Krishna consciousness philosophy and text benefit out of it. That's all.